Jesus died to save the entire world. Today, he's training us in grace so that we can go out and influence someone else's life. That's why I'm so grateful for the friends and partners of this ministry who freely and cheerfully give financial offerings to support us. You understand our vision and you help us in so many ways to reach those who are searching for hope in the midst of darkness. Thank you for empowering us to expand God's kingdom worldwide. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit CrefloDollarMinistries.org today. God bless you. So we've got to make room for the miraculous, for the signs and the wonders that uh, the things that only God can do. He hasn't left the throne. How I many you know he hasn't stopped loving you? He hasn't thrown in the towel. He hasn't forgotten about us. He's not frustrated with us. He's not mad. He's not angry. He is still good. And when we go to him in faith and we know who we are, knowing that we have a place in his plan and according to uh, the, the things that he's destined for our lives. How many of you know he can do things that only God can do? How many of you know there are some things that only God can do? You might have gone to school and learned how to, you know, do all the different things to go from, you know, uh, getting an entry-level job to getting, you know, a six-figure job. But you know what? It's something about God when he gets in your life and he gets involved in your situations. He'll just cause you to experience such favor. You look up, you might even start owning a company. You might start your own company. I mean, there's all kinds of things. We're talking about God today. We're talking about the miraculous and the signs and wonders that still exist in this day and time. And so let us not be moved by the demonic force. Let's not be moved by all the demons and the darkness and the oppression and the wickedness and the evilness and all those things. Because he says where sin abounds, grace will much more abound. And so we, as his children, as the body of Christ, must allow him a space and a place where he can be God, where he can do the miraculous when he can do the impossible, things that men said could never be done. I'm a living witness today. If you would have told me 30-some years ago that I'd be standing up here teaching and talking from the Bible, I probably would have cursed you out and told you where to go. But that's because I realized that God can do only what he can do. And what he wants to do is just blow your mind. So don't be moved by what it looks like right now, what it seems, uh, what the doctor said or what the uh, banker says, all these things. He will turn it upside down because his plan will prevail and the word will prevail over every circumstance, over every situation, over everything. I remember when our daughter, uh, the doctor was talking about how she had alopecia. Man, we got on the word of God and started praying over her hair and praying over her head and got the oil out. She's got a head full of hair right now. Don't listen to, I mean, you can use the information that doctors give and bankers give and lawyers give and all that stuff, but don't let that be the final say so. Let God have final say. Let him be God. Make room for the miraculous, for him to get on your financial affairs, for you, him to get in your children's lives. That's why you sow the word. You train them up when they are young, and you put it in there, and you allow that word to have first place in your child's life and in your family. And though they may go through different things when they become a teenager or young adults or whatever, but you know what? That word will not return void and the assignment of God will be accomplished in their life. So however long it takes for them to get more and more testimony or whatever needs to happen, 
That's all right. God will have the final say-so. Turn over to Matthew 9, 23. He says, when Jesus arrived at the official's home, he saw the noisy crowd and heard the funeral music. Get out, he told them. The girl isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd, look at what they did. How many of you know people going to laugh? I mean, when I first got saved, my family, I was the first one got saved out of my whole family. They laughed. Oh, Lord, what you in there doing? You having communion with Jesus, and you're going to get bread and all this stuff. I said, that's all right. That's all right. God said, just keep living. Keep doing what you're doing. Lo and behold, each one just started getting born again, getting saved. Where are you going to church? What you doing? Where are you going? Can I go with you? What time does it start? People will laugh, but you know what? It doesn't matter. You know why? Because God has the last laugh. The devil's laughing now. He said all kinds of stuff. You know, you ain't never going to get a husband. You ain't going to never get it. They told us we'd never get a house. We had too much credit. Used to, but you know what? We just let God have the final say so. Just, hey, just like Jesus did. He says the crowd laughed. The crowd laughed at him. And after the crowd was put outside. <laughs> you don't have to go home, but you got to go somewhere. Jesus put them outside. Some things that have the place, the, you know, access and all the um, things that they have in your life, you got to put them out side. You got to put them out. Just like Jesus did. They were just, you know, ready to play the funeral music and ready to have the funeral and the memorial and just the whole thing. And Jesus said, she's not dead. What are y'all doing? This isn't a funeral. And they laughed. Ha <laughs> ha, this man crazy. Can't they see that she's dead? There's no life. There's no breath. There's no activity. No pulse. Jesus put them outside. Some things just require total focus, total attention. I don't know about you, when I get into a place, into a zone where I'm really trying to go where I know I need to go, you can't allow all the chatter and the noise. You got to still away to a place of stillness, a place of quietness, a place where you can think, a place where you can hear, a place of peace. And so the crowd was put outside. However, Jesus went in and took the girl by the hand. And she stood up. Go to the next verse, verse 26. The report of this miracle swept through the entire countryside. My, my, my. Look at this in the um, New King James. Let's turn there for a second because I think it says it's slightly different. Matthew 9, thank you, Lord. Is this helping you today? Yeah. Look at verse uh, 24 in the New King James Version. He said to them, make room. They had to make room. He had to put them outside. Turn the funeral music off. Stop laughing. This is not a laughing matter. How I many you know everything in funny? It's, laughter has its place. 
And Jesus said, make room. The girl is not dead. She's not dead. We have to make room for the miraculous in our lives. Things just don't happen. I mean, you know, it just didn't occur just because Jesus showed up and, hey, that's Jesus, so it's about to go down. He said, no, get out. Go home. Go somewhere. Get out of here. Jesus had to be in a position where the miraculous could take place. So in our lives, if there's too much going on, too much noise, too much clatter, too much chatter, we have to realize that perhaps we are preventing room for the miraculous to occur. He says, make room for the girl is not dead. Your finances aren't dead. Your marriage isn't dead. Come on, somebody. I thought my marriage was dead. I thought it was, you know, time to just say, hey, it was great living with you. But you know what? God said, make room. I'm going to show you. I'm going to allow you to learn something that will change the trajectory of your marriage, your family, your life, your ministry, everything. And I'm telling you, we begin to understand about grace-based living. And we understood that in Christ that we stand on equal ground and we are equal heirs and that we are heirs together of the grace of life so that our prayers would not be hindered. And it was through us understanding and getting the revelation of this, I made a decision. I just felt led to go to Johannesburg. I was just at a place where, okay, I guess we've done all we know to do. Love is not enough. How many of you know you've heard that said? We love each other, but we just can't figure out how to live together. And I said, Lord, I really want to go. I really want to understand more and more and more about this life of equality and living uh, in a place where women are not seen as, you know, beneath and inferior, but realizing that one of the reasons why Jesus came was to elevate the status of women. And uh, when I began to understand that, it just created such a surge of love, a surge of loving God and understanding his love for me, my identity in him, and how he sees me. And once I understood that, a miracle just began to take place in my life. And many times we have to create an atmosphere. We have to create an environment. We have to, like Jesus did, do what's necessary in order for the miraculous to occur. So he says, make room for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. And I'm telling you, the crowd was put outside. He went in, took her by the hand, and the girl arose. So today, be assured, there are things that may be going on in your body, but he is Jehovah Rapha. The doctors don't have the final say, so he is the great physician. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our financier, whatever he wants to do. If he needs to bring money from, you know, some other island or some other place, he'll do whatever needs to be done. He is not limited by time. He is not limited by laws. He will reverse natural laws. He'll change laws. He'll cause all kinds of things to happen once we make a decision that we're going to make room for him to move in our life. Let's give God some praise for that. Thank you, Jesus. We can just go home right there. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And uh, I think we are just going to pause here for just a moment and um, just use that as a place where we can bring this to a close. And Father, let's just lift up our hands to him. 
wherever you are, you may be at your desk, you might be, you know, in your cubicle, you might be at home with your children trying to carve out and hear what I'm saying, but let's just allow the room for the miraculous to take place right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we just thank you. We lift up our hands. We surrender to you right now, Lord. Glory, glory be to God. Areas where you need the miraculous to take place in your life. Present it to him right now. Things that have been dormant and laid in a place that have been considered dead, no life. I want you just to allow the Father to receive that. I just want you to right now create an opportunity, create a space for him to get into that area and to be God over that area. And so, Father, we come before you right now, Lord. We know that before we even ask, you've already answered. Before we even seek, you've already provided for us. So we thank you for that right now. In the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is moving right now upon the hearts. He is wanting us to get to a place where we will yield and we will allow him to be God. Let his anointing and his presence just fall on you right now, breathing in his anointing and exhaling his presence. His presence is here. Glory be to God. Just like you breathed upon Tabitha, Lord, just like you did the miraculous with Tabitha, Father, I ask that you'll cause the miraculous to take place today. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Just receive it right now by faith. Say, I receive it by faith. Oh, hallelujah. Your finances aren't dead. Your marriage isn't dead. Your relationship with your children is not dead. Your business isn't dead. Your, oh, hallelujah. We worship you, great God, who you are. Thank you, Lord God. Glory be to God. Just receive that right now. The presence of the Lord is here. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He is not dead. He is yet alive. Oh, thank you, Father. And even things and people and circumstances and stuff from the past, just put it out. Get rid of it. Let it go. Stop holding on to it. Make room for the new. Make room for the fresh. Make room for the clear. Make room for his power to flow through you and through your life so you can hear and do and carry out what he's wanting to do in your life. So he can raise up, he can broaden, he can do the new thing that he's never done before. We thank you right now, Lord. We worship you because of who you are and the great plan that you have for our families and for each and every one of us, Lord. Hallelujah. He's breathing life. He's breathing life on dead situations right now in the name of Jesus. Someone's watching from a hospital bed in a hospital room. He's breathing life in your body. I decree it from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lifting, we make room for the spirit of joy and the oil of gladness. We rebuke depression right now and oppression and demonic influence right now and the lying deceptive spirit over lives and over eyes and over minds in the name of Jesus we invite you Holy Spirit to do what you desire to do in the lives 
of our family, the lives of our young people, and the life of this church. In our lives, we thank you. We welcome you. We invite you right now. Come thy kingdom be done, thy will on earth. Oh, hallelujah. You are God, and besides you, there is none other. Hallelujah. Oh, he's doing it right now. We receive it. We lay hold of it by grace through faith. Things that are impossible for men, they are possible with God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you in advance for the testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank you in advance for the victory. We thank you in advance for the triumph. We thank you in advance for the deliverance. We thank you in advance for the breakthrough. We thank you in advance for manifestation. We thank you in advance for signs, wonders, miracles. We thank you in advance right now. Oh, hallelujah. We call those things that be not as though they are. We receive it right now in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Great God that you are, we worship you. Oh, hallelujah. My God today. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. How many of you know there's a sweet spirit in this place? I hope you sense it where you are. He is here to lift the burden, to remove the yoke. The burden lifter is here today. We thank you, Lord. You are the lifter of our head. And it is by your anointing. Oh, we thank you, Lord God. Jesus' mighty name. Glory, glory, glory. Sometimes you just have to make room for him to move in your services. You just got to allow him to do through worship. Just worshiping him. Coming before him. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Jesus' mighty name. 